Hi, I'm Angela Wolf, fashion designer and online instructor, and today I want to show you how to make a very simple top. You don't even need a pattern, all you need is a measuring tape. So all three of these are the same exact pattern. Those two are cut on the bias, added a little hand dyeing, and this one is cut on the straight of grain, and I added some embroidery. This fabric is a gauze, and I'm going to give you some tips for that as well. So the first thing you want to do is measure around your entire body. And once you have that measurement, add at least six inches. So that will give you the extra ease in your top. So you just have a rectangle. You measure from your neckline to where you want it to go as a hem. So that's one measurement. And that will be the same measurement as we have here. The only thing you need to do is you're going to need to add seam allowances. So for the neckline, I'm going to add two inches up here. And if you decide that you want elastic at the bottom, go ahead and add one inch to the bottom. That's it. So once you have, you're going to cut two rectangle pieces. One will be the front, one will be the back. Fold the fabric in half. And you need to cut a little bit of room for your armholes. So if you look at this piece here, this is one I've already cut. If you are a little bit confused of how to do the angle, this is really simple. You can eyeball this. Go in about two inches two to three inches, depending on your size, and go down about four inches and start to curve around like this. If you're really particular, you can grab a pattern and use that as a guide, but this will be your armhole. All right, so the next thing that you're gonna wanna do is get the fabric ready for sewing and ready for embroidery. So the first thing I have here is this is the top area where you're going to run the twill tape through. I've pressed it under one inch and one inch. And I'm going to do the same thing for this one here. When you're using a gauze fabric or a lightweight fabric, it stretches a lot. So I want to give you one tip here. Give it a little steam. Use the tailor's clapper to hold it in place. Now look what happens. Your fabric is stretched out a little bit. When you're all finished sewing, when we're all finished, you're going to spritz it with a little bit of water and it'll bring that fabric right back into place. A little tip there. So both of my pieces, I've pressed the top. Now what if you want to add embroidery? I've already embroidered this section. It looks a little wrinkly because it just came off of the embroidery hoop, so don't worry about that. But what I'm using here is, this is sticky back wash away. So it's sticky, I can stick the fabric to it when I embroider it, and then it'll wash away. Now what about the decorative stitching? If you want to add rows of stitching, if you don't have stabilizer under there, it will stretch out. So before you rip your entire hooping away, after I'm done embroidering, I pull the paper off, and I just fold this back, like this. And because it's sticky, I can maneuver it a little bit until it looks just right. You don't want to stretch the fabric, you just want it to keep its shape. And then this fabric actually has guidelines for me to follow, or you could chalk in lines to follow. So let's go back to the machine. We're going to add some decorative stitching and sew. Pick a stitch that's not too dense although this embroidery design looks pretty good. But on decorative stitching, you just want something that flows nicely along your design. I think I'll do this one here with the almost look like wavy flowers. It'll blend in with this just fine. Get ready to go. Now again, if you don't have lines to guide you on this fabric, you could chalk them in. Just use like a tailor's chalk. And because I already have the stabilizer back there, this will stitch without stretching the fabric out. Then I rinse off the stabilizer off the entire back and you'll end up with beautiful designs on your fabric. All right, I think you're getting the idea. I'm just gonna stop right there. So this is what I ended up with. And because I had the stabilizer, it didn't stretch out. So I could do rows and rows of this. That's how easy it is to embellish that fabric. So let's get sewing. I'm just gonna change to a straight stitch. Again, I've already pressed this part up, but the first thing I wanna do is go to the serger and stitch my seams closed. So with right sides together, this fabric frays a lot. You could also use a sewing machine, but I find it just as easy to use a, just the serger. So I have this set up for a four thread overlock. 
Seam allowance is your choice. Remember, you designed the pattern. So I would just lightly trim off the edges. So it's almost a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So by the way, when I cut this, I didn't measure. So don't worry if one's longer than the other. It's not from the serging, it's just from my cutting. I'll trim that off later. And again, serge the other side. Just make sure the fabric doesn't stretch while you're serging. I'm just allowing it to feed, making a nice straight line for my side seam. All right, what about the armholes? You have a lot of options, but I wanted to make a really fast top, so you could ask, add bias binding. I'm just gonna show you a little trick with this fabric. Run it through the serger. And I'm just gonna do one armhole to start. Let's go back to the iron. On the wrong side of the fabric, you're just gonna turn in this surged ed edge. The surged edge just makes it easier to follow when you trim it, when you turn it in. Give it a little pressing. And all the way around. So the surged edge allows it to be finished. If you have a cover stitch machine, run it through the cover stitch machine. But we're going back to the sewing machine. All right, you have the side seams done. Now let's go ahead and stitch up those armholes. You could use a decorative stitch here. That would look great. But we're just going to go to a straight stitch. And I'm going to change the stitch length to 3.0. Again, using contrasting thread so you can see. And I'm just stitching, I'm lining up my fabric right on this edge of the presser foot. Try to keep my hand out of the way there. Stitching the armhole in place. So you would do this for both of the armholes. I'm just doing one side of the garment. I think you get the idea. So here is my armhole. Not too bad. All right, what about the necklines? I've already pressed this in place. If it comes undone, you can press it again, but I'm just gonna fold this under for now. Because this fabric is see-through, I have the seam allowance the same amount as the part up on the top. So that's one inch and one inch. Fold it over. You wanna do a little bit of a back stitch here. Stitch just along the edge making sure don't stretch your fabric as it goes through, just allow it to go in like this. Now, I didn't finish the other armhole, so I'm not gonna backstitch, but this is, both sides would look like this. And then go ahead and do the back side. If you decided you wanted to add decorative stitching across this area, you could add some of that sticky back stabilizer. Go ahead and sew the seam in a color that matches the fabric. Add some stabilizer and go ahead and do the decorative stitching just like we did in the other area. So let's go back up here and see what we have. This is honestly the fastest top ever. It's perfect for over a bathing suit or at the beach. All right. So this is the back side, this is the front side. I'm gonna give it a little spray of water that will get this fabric to go back in or just throw it in the wash and dryer again. I have twill tape. You could use ribbon, get creative on that part. And all you do is you feed this in one side. Sometimes I'll use, I'll cut the same fabric on the bias. That makes a great neckline finish. Go all the way through this side here. I'm just using a safety pin to do this. There are a lot of contraptions you can use to make this go through a little faster, probably. All right, so there's my neckline. You'll tie that in a knot. Now, let's go back to these tops for a second. 
this is bias. So I use the same fabric on the bias. So is the other one. This is just twill tape. And notice once you put it back on the dress form or on your body, you just tie this. Let me turn it to the side. I kind of left it hanging because I didn't have it finished, but just tie it like that. You can leave it as a decoration closer to the front. Here's my decorative stitching. Now, these two do not have elastic at the bottom, and this one does. Very cute look, so let me show you how to do that. So on the bottom here, I did not cut this very straight, so I'm just going to give that a little evening out here. Perfect, like it never happened, right? I run this through the serger, press this up. Now you could also press it with a double fold like you did the top, but you really don't need to at the bottom. You're not even gonna see it. Press it all the way around. I'm going up about an inch. So the kicker is what elastic do you use? You don't wanna use an elastic that's too thin or it will stretch out. So I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine. I would stitch along there just like we did at the top, right along the edge. Leave an opening in the side about a half of an inch and then feed your elastic through. So how do you decide what size elastic? Just wrap it around your hips or wherever this is gonna fall. Give it a little stretch so it's not too tight. You don't want the top to be, well, unless you want a crop top, but you want it to just fit comfortably. Feed it through the entire area and that one area that you have open, just pull it back through, do a zigzag stitch, and you've attached that. Now this elastic, if you look, is just under a half of an inch. That's the perfect width. You could always go a little bit different, just test it on your body shape. And that's how simple it is to sew a cute top for summer in less than 30 minutes. <laughs>